Okay, so I was thinking suicide. I kind of have changed my mind. Dead Peter Carey. And I still have the dead on the front. I, I don't think this was a suicide. I'm rolling it out. Um. Right, let's look at this shelf. A sperm whale tooth. The tooth of a sperm whale. Probably from one of Peter Carey's catches. Because that was his job, he was a whaler. Well, he's, he's got two there, okay. He turned them into bookends. Shelf. Suspiciously empty space? <gasps> There's an outline in the dust. This place is not covered with dust, like the rest of the shelf. Something was an stolen. An object was taken from here. It was larger than a book. Box or a small chest, perhaps. Ah, imagination talent helps. Shit, didn't read it in time. Oh well, it's a good thing we've got a good imagination. Tooth, <laughs> definitely suicide. I say he had it coming, and we call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> um, whalers would tend to will on leftover bones and teeth and bits when they were sailing around doing nothing. What does whittle mean? Like, uh, carve it. Right, we need... Someone stole a box. So we're looking for a box somewhere. Hmm. The ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. That's right, before he retired. He retired in 84 or something. Um... A semen that likes sperm whales. <laughs> the plot moistens. Oh no. <laughs> oh, a map. Oh, hey. Giraffe. Oh, hey, us. Dundee. Dundee. Oh, it's a route. To Hammerfest. Hammerfest. It's a whaling map. A whaling map. I guess it goes green when we're done examining something. So this one has gone question mark. Hmm. The ship's logs of the Sea Unicorn for the years 1878 to 1884. Peter Carey was her captain. Okay, so that doesn't seem like we're done with that. Harpoons. Harpoons for hunting whales. Um, whaling is like carving. I feel like it implies smaller scale with a tiny knife only. Okay. The puns? Wait, what puns? <laughs> Wait, what is wild? Home, oh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Chest. We've opened the chest. Oh, <gasps> boots. Oh, I bet these match the Peter footprints. Carey's boots. They look to be a size eight. Okay. Can we take this hat to where? I think we should steal this hat. <gasps> because we are going to dress up as a sailor. Old navigation instruments. Nothing interesting. Okay. It, it backs us out, I guess, when we're done. Okay, so we're not stealing the hat. But the hat was locked in our wardrobe, so... I feel like we should steal it. He doesn't need it anymore. <laughs> Free hat! <laughs> um... Literally this morning, Shadow was looking at a holiday trip to an almost exactly that route, except continuing down to Germany. Oh, that's really cool. Like on a cruise? How do you continue down to Germany? Oh, like beyond uh, England? Ah, that is cool. Well, here you go. Detailed view of what you're going to be seeing on the way. That would be amazing. That would be so cool. Are you gonna do it? See unicorn. Something. Dundee. Oh, Dundee was the mentioned. Sea unicorn. She was the ship that Peter Carey commanded. It's not a bad name for a ship, actually. It's quite a good name. Um. You have never been on a cruise ship before. If he can get some the holiday some if he can get the holiday times probably. Oh, that's really exciting. I haven't either, but I think they're supposed to be really, really good. That is really cool. Someone drank from this glass recently. 
Well, he was getting drunk. Well, we might as well just take his cigars. The initials PC have been crudely burned. A sailor's work. I like that. It's it's more personal. The initial Oh, rotate. Aha, right click to rotate. Oh, it's just tobacco. It doesn't Hmm. This aroma is familiar. Oh but to recognize it, I must construct my associations in one picture. Ooh, puzzles. Rotate and move the elements to form a clear picture of the aromatic associations. Is it a pipe? Oh, this is a I found a pipe! Wait, what on earth? Tobacco leaf? Hi. Rotate. Don't press space because it'll skip. Okay, oh! It's 3D. What the hell? So, like, we can make a boat. Can I move these a bit more? Hmm. So, like, there's the bottom bit of the boat. Understand what I'm doing? There's the back of the boat. Like it's a bit scrambled. Um, did you start over again? Again, maybe. You've only been on cruise ships in a work function, so so we would see on the inside. You worked on cruise ships? That's cool. There is one stop where you can go sledding with dogs and everything. Wow. Like in that'll be that'll be very far up north, right? Somewhere in the Scandinavian area, <laughs> which is probably the majority of the trip. To be fair, I don't think it'll be in England. Hmm. So this only moves up and down. This only moves side to side, right? The bomb. Oh, hold on. We need to get the top and the bottom. There, 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 there. I found it! Woo! Uh, this is a coarse tobacco, quite strong and very popular among sailors. Okay. I mean, he is a sailor, so this, that's not really revolutionary, rum. but... A sailor's drink. I found the it rum. It seems that Captain Carey was enjoying a drink before he met his death. Drinking all the rum? Okay, we've examined the table. What is this? Shiny plaque? Can't, can't look at it. Nothing important. Goes right to the top point of Norway. Very cool. What if you'd see the northern lights over the sea? Do it, noob! <laughs> oh yeah, you've you've just said that, and I am. I just <laughs> said it anyway, but I didn't realize. Um, it was you were the entertainment. It was a zoo cruise ship. <laughs> oh god. Um, you work with installing and maintaining navigation systems. Oh, you worked with that. Whoa, that is technical. That's cool. Um. Uh, rum? Suddenly interested. <laughs> Richie, did you do this? For the rum? Okay, let's see. This man is in his 50s, yet he still looks quite strong. So he's in his 50s. He retired at, in 84 and it's now 95. So he must have retired when he was like 40. Peter Carey was fully dressed. He was not caught by surprise. It is possible that he knew his murderer. 
How do we know he wasn't caught by surprise? Because he's not in his dressing gown? The weapon fully penetrated the body. The force of the blow was immense. Yikes. <laughs> okay. Um, you've not been around commercial kind of boards very much, but you imagine once you get out of the customer zone, it's not too different from the long windowless corridors in the naval and flying ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen inside those too. Yay. That's cool. Um, I have only been on like transport ships, like, um, I don't, it's not called a cruise. What's it called? A ferry. I've only been on ferries. Um, obviously as a passenger. There is a two-day stop in one town where for more than the entire cruise costs, you can spend the night in an ice hotel. Might skip that option. <laughs> I, I understand that it's like a novelty. Um, yeah, I don't think I would bother. <laughs> Um, would it be like, so as an ice hotel, would it be cold or would there be heat as in? Keeping you warm at least a bit. Uh, right, let's take his notebook. Oh, that's not his notebook. J.H.N. are probably the initials of the owner of this notebook. Judith? Hmm. The pattern of the blood stain indicates that the notebook was not lying on the floor prior to the crime, but it was dropped into the pool of blood after the death of Peter Carey. Maybe this is the killer. Anything on the back? No. Uh... Ooh, is this a phone book? Do we know any of these people? What's his name? Peter. PC. These oh. abbreviations mean something. But what? Oh, we're gonna we're gonna get to the bottom of that, I'm sure of it. They use warm ice. <laughs> it's cold but not that cold. Temperature inside an ice hotel room is usually around twenty-three to twenty-five degrees Fahrenheit. Although it's pretty far from tropical, it's not gonna plunge too far past freezing. Wait, what? What's 23 to 25 degrees in Celsius? It's not gonna plunge too far past freezing. So you're telling me it's like minus one? Because that is cold. Uh, rotate the object in any direction to exact. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This blood is from the pool underneath the dead body. So it's not from the stab? This wooden handle is plain and solid. Is this a whittle and knife? To defend himself with this knife, but he did not succeed. Oh, okay. Maybe that's a whittle and knife. Let's examine. Peter Carey was impaled to the wall by a whaling harpoon. Hmm. That's the journey you were having. Yeah, yeah. It, that's that's pretty cold. Um, not tropical, but won't plunge too far. Past freezing. <laughs> it's definitely um contradiction there. Right, I pressed B because it told me to press B. Ooh, find a pair of related clues and they will form a deduction. It's like contradiction! This is what I was trying to say before. Um notebook. Oh, I don't think I'm ready for this. What am I trying to Oh my god, stop moving. If I press F1 for the hell, will it just bring the information back up again? Yes. Red colour signifies an unachievable clue combination. Okay. Uh, break in attempt with no gardener. Fine. Notebook. Draw a clear picture of the crime by forming your deductions from a combination of clues. Track down the guilty party. What is this? Like a neuron? Task. Make an ambush. An ambush must be made tonight to see if the break-in attempt will be repeated. <gasps> We're gonna ambush people? This is cool. Okay. Um, minus five to minus four-ish in Celsius. 
definitely not tropical. I mean, they, they weren't lying. Um, is the intention to make a correct combination or to combine until you find a thing? I guess it's making the correct one. This is the one with the brain connections. It's very cool. You'd say that's is on the edge of calling it not too far from freezing. Isn't freezing zero degrees? Um. Ha! Huh. Someone was here yesterday. They attempted to force the door to gain entry. Okay, so we're gonna organize an ambush. I am so here for that. Can I take one of these harpoons for self-defense? Uh, I guess we've kind of found everything. I like that it's like, right, you found everything. You can organize your ambush now. Um, I wonder if we can go and... Oh, we need... Right, I don't want to start my ambush yet. I've got things to do. Oh, he's got a jawbone there. I want to test these footprints. Oh, drag down. Uh, don't like... Uh, oh, These it's boots don't match the footprints. Too small. We need some bigger boots. There. Okay, it wasn't that. Um, I guess it's kind of telling us the things we can do. So now maybe if we go and talk to Judith, we can ask her about these things. It's very handy if that's how they've done it. And at least you can keep track of what evidence you've used and stuff. If it's not that, then I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Um. Yeah, not worth worth paying loads of money for. Yeah, for sure. You'd like to see the inside, maybe, but not like pay all the money to sleep in that cold. <laughs> it seems so friggin' cold. I think I would like actually potentially die. Um. One can always sleep in a tent in the winter to get a cold experience, yeah. Is this your husband's tobacco pouch? I'm not sure. It might be. But he hadn't smoked in a very long time. He hadn't smoked in a very long time. Well, this is definitely his pouch. It's got his initial... Maybe he was doing it in secret. Your husband's private papers. Do you know where they are? There was a small tin box, barely larger than a book. He kept his papers there. That's it. it. Should be somewhere in his cabin. It's been stolen. The papers. Thank you, madam. The papers have been stolen. So now we know what. What kind of papers? Now we can organize an ambush. I wonder what they want with his papers. Maybe he found some treasure. Could be that. When he was whaling. That's why he retired. So he didn't need to work anymore because he had treasure enough to live crime detected well, i wasn't what there do you think? i think that we are lucky and why is that because of last night's attempted break-in silver linings Oof. you've lost me it is very probable that whoever came here hoped to find the door open they tried to force it with a knife blade but they failed what will they do? Why, return tonight, when they will be better prepared. Aha! So what do you propose? Ambush! We shall remain on the outside, near the window, where we stand the best chance of catching sight of our visitor. Well, gentlemen, ready your pistols. We have a long night ahead of us. Oh, are we just gonna solve it really quickly? Are we just gonna, like, find them and arrest them? Um, returning to the scene to cover it up. No, it wasn't me. But I have questions, right? Why? Right, so whoever killed the dude took the box, probably. Or unless he hid the box somewhere else, maybe. But why were they then coming back, you know? They could have taken anything they wanted when they did it. Sus. Ready your pistol. Mr. Holmes. Uh, task. Investigate the murder 
Organize an ambush. Have I missed something? Oh wait, let me go and check. That's still a question mark. We need to find a good place for an ambush. Ah. Perhaps behind Carrie's cabin near the window. Behind Carrie's cabin near the window. Here? What about under this tree? Ah, here. This window. This looks like the perfect hiding place. Perfect? No, it wasn't me. <laughs> ah, this is telling you you can look and check the dialogue. It's really good that you can do that. Conveniently shuttered window, yeah. Hopefully the shutters stay open. An ambush sounds like it would be fun, but not... Excuse Shh. me. Did you hear that? Be quiet! Shh! Tackle him. There's someone there. I'm gonna collar him. I'll be right behind you. Stop talking! He's right there! Oh god. Oh god. I'm coming! I'll help! Wait, were you here the whole time, Mr. Policeman? Mr. Holmes? <laughs> Mr. Holmes, come and see what we've caught in our net. Okay. Don't shoot! All right, my fine fellow. Who are you and what are you doing here? You're detectives, I suppose. You imagine that I'm connected with the death of Captain Carey. I assure you, I'm innocent. <laughs> innocent? I bet he is. What are you doing in his cabin? Shall I tell you? You came to retrieve what you had lost after killing Peter Carey. Oh, the noble. we were here waiting for you. What's your name, what sir? What is your name? John Hopley oh. Nelligan, but I... I didn't... Do you deny that you came here yesterday? No, but... But I... Yes, it, it's just that I couldn't... I'm tired of this. Off we go to the yard. Tomorrow, I'll see that you're put in front of the judge. Mm. What? But you can't. I'm not... It's a terrible Why mistake. Why is his hands covered in blood? Enough. You can explain all of that to the judge. You're coming with me to the yard. But... In light of recent events, it seems evident that your coming here was unnecessary. All the same, I'm very grateful to you, Mr. Holmes. You are welcome, Inspector. I want to know the full story. But please don't be too hard on our young fellow. I would like to question him tomorrow morning. Yes, me too. Me and Sherlock Holmes are just on the same wavelength. It's ridiculous. Um. <laughs> very eloquent for being caught rifling through someone's cabin just now. He's... Hmm. His notebook was there. He knows things. Insert peeping quote. <laughs> It's called an ambush because you pretend you am bush. <laughs> yeah, I like it. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um Right, let's interrogate this son of a bitch. Wait, examine his belongings? Yes, please. Mr. Holmes. They all just say Mr. Holmes. Okay. Um, where's his stuff? Good morning, Mr. Holmes. Can I help you? Good morning, Constable. I would like to speak to the fellow who was arrested at Woodman's Lee last night. Ah, the young man. He's waiting in the interrogation room. You can go straight through. His belongings are held in the evidence room. Okay. Thank you. Ideal. So we can we on to the evidence room first, I would like. Are you familiar with the general themes of the original Sherlock Holmes stories? How Sherlock sees the world and acts towards various levels of society? I don't think I am, no. I bet he will say but. But, 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 what, but? But, 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 but. Um, I don't think so. He, like, I've, I've watched the first Robert Downey Jr. movie. And I can't remember anything about it. Mr. Holmes? Excuse me, sir. I'm looking for the evidence room. A 
that's not a jail cell. Is that the evidence? Oh, this is the evidence room. I found it. I don't really... Don't close it. Okay, close the door then. I'm frightened. <laughs> I live here now. Okay. Um... Ah, here it is. On the table, ready for me. Um, interesting. I suppose you will get to decide a bit in the game for yourself since you play him. Interesting. I think... Hmm... No, I don't really know what he, like, stands for or anything like that. Oh, look, there's names. I wonder if these are, like... Developers? Or... People on that list that we found? Criminals? Oops. S.R. Martin. All I can hear is George R.R. R. Martin. These are the suspect's belongings. Alright, this... Well, yeah, we found this. The notebook that we found on Peter Carey's cabin floor. Is that like coordinates? These abbreviations mean something. Do they have not. phones in those days? I'm not sure. Oh, a lot of these have like four letters. These abbreviations okay. mean. We need something else for that. But what? You don't think many modern adaptations pay as much attention to certain personality, opinion, behaviors, which you think this game might. Interesting. No, I really don't know. All I know is he's eccentric. From R. Dawson. To my friend and partner, 1883. So that's the year bef that's while the um, the unicorn thing or something, the files in his cabin. From R. Dawson to my friend and partner. I've forgotten this dude's name. Let me tab, have a look. Okay, so I guess we can kind of travel, we'll be able to travel back to the cabin and have a look at those. Well, it'll be in here actually, won't it? Uh, oh, we're going to ask him about the knife. Um. Ship's logs, that's the one. Hmm, okay. What was this dude's name? Oh, we got... Peter Carey one. Maybe we'll get to remember. Oh, can I see the front of the book? Something. Forgotten these initials as well. Was it Dawson? Okay. Makes you think this since he is further investigating this case where your average police at the time would be quite happy to throw this ruffian with no money or connections and a decent bit of evidence against him away for life. Is he like a uh, great a good kind of um like he wants to get the bad the leaders like whatever like the high up crime people or something a handkerchief with the initials j h n j h n oh there's his name j h nulligan wait who's dawson then oh was he having an affair Or maybe that's his wife. Well, no, he's only young. Maiden name. A pocket knife. It was used to force the door of Peter Carey's cabin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It says take, but then I don't do anything with it. Oh, and examine. Partner, 1883. From R. Dawson. Oh, we have to click on, like, the specific bits. To my friend, Dawson. I've seen this name before. Perhaps my archive is the answer. Oh, the archive in my house? Oh, like my actual tab archive. Mm -mm. Right, we've completed the belongings. I guess we're going to talk to him. I kind of want to see if I can travel back home and see if it was something to do with my archive. Ignore new bot. <laughs> On one again. Um. 
You'd say less grey good and more living by his own code. Okay. Huh, I wonder what the code is. Very cool. I like it when people live by their own codes. Codes? Codes. It's more fun. Ooh, the morgue. Let's go and visit the morgue. Just for shits and giggles. At least this one won't be haunted. Like, all the other games about morgues. Ugh. Why does that skeleton have a neck? That is a weird diagram. Okay. Well. Found a body. In the morgue. Ugh. Ugh, look at that saw. Okay. Let us. I guess go and question the dude? Inspector? Ah, yeah, we could... Locked. Denied! I guess we, <laughs> we can't go and see the inspector then. Or maybe he's still at the other house. I think something's broken here. Your pipe's steaming and leaking. Pretty bad. Okay, I guess we're going in. I want to go and check my archive. What the... Ah, the interrogation room. Mr. Holmes? Hello. Who are you? Playing a harmonica. Very quietly. Oh, uh, okay, I'll go in and then I'll go home. Okay. Is there anything around here that we want to find before we talk? No. Why is the light on a string? Oh, so you can change the light bulbs? Maybe. Okay. Hi. Oh, he's still got that blood on his hands. Has he been here all night? Does this notebook belong to you? Yes, but where did you find it? I did not know... Uh, I, I thought I'd lost it at the hotel. What do these abbreviations mean? Oh no, I beg you, I can't. If I told you, it would only make things worse. But I will find out eventually, Mr. Nelligan. Maybe he's being framed. Maybe he's like, um, some sort of low-down person for the Mafia. The sea knife was found near Carrie's body. Tell me, Mr. Nelligan, did Mr. Carrie try to defend himself or to attack you with it? I don't know. I didn't kill anyone. Good answer. The police seized this valuable ring from you. Whose is it? I didn't steal it from anyone. It has always belonged to me. Ugh. Uh, the engraving. Okay, I've got to be ready on that Q button there. Could the blood on his hands be wounds? Maybe. I thought he'd been like rummaging around in the blood pool, <laughs> but maybe it's actually injuries. The ring's date of engraving is many years ago. You would have been a child then, hardly in any position to receive such an item from a partner. Oh, maybe it's his parents. You got nothing to say? Yeah, it actually looks like injuries. Look, it looks like blisters or something. <gasps> Has he been digging graves? A shovel would cause injuries there, wouldn't it? He can even sum it with his hand. Hmm. Okay, I think I need to go and investigate my archives. Oh, it's this thing. Shabby cap. <laughs> A cappy shab. <laughs> uh, hmm. A thin neck? Patch. I guess we're figuring out like he's poor. A 
rich <laughs> because he's got expensive fabric. <laughs> um, aha, uh -huh. short sleeves. Oh, this is like all he used to be rich, right? I think he used to be rich. This is when he was younger and then he's grown out of his jacket and it's patched up and he's got a shabby cap that matches his patch. But he's malnourished, so he's got a thin neck. Callous. Oh, it looks infected. Scars. He's been working with his hands. Like, is he a miner or something? Uh. You thought it was scabby. Ugh, scabby cap. <laughs> That's even worse. Have we seen some evidence that someone with a fat neck did the murder? I did wonder that. Or something about strangling. Like, maybe he couldn't have been strangled <laughs> because he had a thin neck. <laughs> Clothing back then would be reused and fixed for decades. Takes a long time to sew a jacket. That is a good point. I keep forgetting this is this is set in the olden days. Or could it be passed down clothes? Yeah. Second hand. Oh last time it um it took me out of this screen when we found everything. Ooh. Elaborate buttons on the expensive jacket. So, Mr. Nelligan, who is the true owner of the ring? The ring is the mine. One, one true ring. Ooh. Oh. Oh, father's jacket. Oh, let's just browse the evidence for a second. We got his character portrait. Nelligan was approximately 19 is approximately 19 years old. He was raised in wealth, but after the desertion of his father 10 years ago, he and his family fell into poverty. He worked to earn money by cleaning fish. Despite undertaking such manual work for a considerable time, Nelligan remains physically weak. Maybe he cleaned fish on the whaling boat? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just making things up now. But we were right. He used to be rich. Then he got poor. I am Sherlock Holmes. I just am. And, you know, he's me. He is me. I am him. <laughs> what is new here? Hmm. Okay. Oops, this gear. Father's jacket. No, Mr. Nelligan. I believe that the ring had belonged to your father. Oh, but, but, but how do you know? Because I'm smart. The jacket you are wearing is made of an expensive fabric that only a man of exceptional wealth could afford. You do not seem to me to be a rich man, Mr. Nelligan. Furthermore, the garment is ill-fitting. It is quite clear that it belonged to someone else. Most probably, your father. With your father gone and taking with him the family's wealth, as a little boy you had to find yourself a manual job, and it was most probably cleaning fish. You cut your hands often while working. I can tell from the scars. I'm speechless, Mr. Holmes. It, it all happened exactly as you say. We're just that good. Well, I will see you soon, young man. Please, let me go. I'm innocent. You just wait here for a bit. Okay, um... <laughs> All hail Queen Snoop. Oh, yeah. Um, an expensive fabric and clothes would never be thrown out. Cut that up for smaller projects. Yeah, we should do more of that nowadays. Like, it, there'd be less waste. Um... As all clothing was made individually and almost always for a specific person at this time, everything would fit. Yeah, so like seeing something that doesn't fit, it's very clearly not his. I thought it was his from when he was younger and he'd grown out of it, but it must have been his dad's. But it doesn't bode well for you, John Nelligan, that you lied about the ring. Sir, you should have just told me that it was your dad's. There's nothing sus about that. Okay, let's let's enter the brain. Johnny, Johnny Long Arms. <laughs> yes. Um. 
The guess for when he was younger was good, but he would also outgrow the body. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I guess you, <laughs> your arms aren't the only thing that grows when you get long. No, when you get longer, when you get older. <laughs> Son of unknown dad named Short Arms. Yeah, he must have got his arm length off his mother. <laughs> All right, it's brain time. Big brain. Uh, Peter Carey is a non-smoker. Nelligan's notebook. Like, his notebook was there. Uh, missing tin. I would like to ask him about the tin box. Oh, swift actions. Was armed with his knife but didn't have time to use it. The murder acted quickly and instinctively. Uh, what about the break in attempts and the notebook? We had a thought. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like that it unlocks thought. They like little seeds. Um. <laughs> yeah, get longer, taller. We wouldn't know. Short people club. <laughs> Hell yeah. Giraffe, are you actually tall? I don't even know your kind of height. <laughs> Maybe Giraffe isn't tall. Just subverts the expectations. Giraffe is tall in your heart. <laughs> Johnny short sleeves. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Um, we had one thought. Groundbreaking. So the breaking attempts were made in order to recover the notebook that had been lying in a pool of the victim's blood. This proves the guilt of the person who made these attempts. That is a thought that I was having. But, it just feels like there's more to it. So we can browse our brain. I like it. Space for clues. Oh, so we can try and put more things together if we've got any. Uh... Swift actions and pin to the wall. That doesn't feel like something you would plan. Contradiction! Not really, but you know. Task experiment required. Ooh, experiments! We need to go to our desk. We need to find out whether an unskilled and untrained man could use a harpoon well enough to kill a fully piercing body. No, to kill by fully piercing a body. Okay. I think the conclusion of this test is that this, you're not going to be able to. And therefore, this 19-year-old lad is not the killer. Predictions. I need to stage a reconstruction. Yeah! I'm sure <gasps> Watson would be happy to oblige. Watson! We're gonna... Oh, I'm excited. Uh, prepare for harpoon throwing experiment. Okay. Bye, John. What am I doing here? I've done nothing wrong. Okay. Wait, John! James, right? It's all connected, all the names. Okay. Uh, let me check whether he's in here, yeah? Locked. Locked, right. Let me check if we can fast travel. I'm saying fast travel as if there's any other kind of travel, but let's go home.